The two victims went to different schools but gave police a story that sounded disturbingly similar. Both said they had matched with Tybo on Tinder and he wanted to have a first date at their apartment. Then they said they were assaulted once he was inside and they were alone. I uh, don't know much about it other than the fact that um, the ICA has suspended him indefinitely, and uh, I don't expect him to be out here on the field. That's what University of Washington head football coach Jed Fish said about running back Tybo Rogers Monday after allegations came to light following his arrest for sexual assault. They're certainly going to be taken seriously. Police say while Rogers was hitting the field with the Huskies football team off the field, he was matching with two young women on Tinder who would ultimately accuse him of rape. The first victim, a student at Seattle Community College, reported being assaulted October 28th, saying she matched with him in August, with Rogers eventually asking if he could come over to her place to continue the conversation and smoke some marijuana. She told police she made it clear she wasn't going to have sex on a first date, and she told Rogers, I used to and it got scary. He allegedly responded, what do you mean it got scary? Police say when he came over, the victim felt something was off, and after her roommate left, she said he forcibly started kissing her and holding her face by her jaw, then commanded her to give him oral sex while forcing her head down towards his groin. Then she said he pushed her down and sexually assaulted her. She went to Harborview Medical Center and completed a sexual assault kit, reporting it to police and later posting online that people should be careful around him and he was not safe. Police say she reported the assault to the Title IX office around November 28th, the same date Rogers is accused of calling her to confront her. Police say Rogers was suspended around the end of November 2023, noting that the Pac-12 championship was played December 1st but Rogers did not travel with the team, and there was no further information released by the university other than Coach Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator of the University of Washington football team, saying, we're working through some things, some challenges he's had off the field. After that suspension, Rogers was able to come back to play in the Sugar Bowl and the national championship. When asked why he was allowed to come back, this was Fish's response. I wasn't here for that. That had nothing to do with, with what we do here. What I found out about, as soon as I found out about the allegations of as soon as we were brought, it was brought to our attention. Uh, he's been suspended indefinitely, so I have no comment about what happened in the past. That, that has nothing to do with me. Police say a warrant was served on the University of Washington Athletic Department and their Title IX office. In the warrant return, they say there is confirmation the victim reported this assault to Title IX. There were also multiple emails sent within the University of Washington Athletic Department confirming Rogers should be taken off the travel roster for the Pac-12 championship game. But no documentation of the reasons for the change or any written document of any discipline of Rogers. Police also found text messages referencing Rogers and questions being asked about what was going on with him by different people, including Rogers' father. However, police say the questions were answered by phone, so the responses were not captured digitally. Those messages were sent within a week or two of the victim's report to Title IX, and investigators believe there is a connection between his suspension and her disclosure of the assault, especially after the comments made by the coaching staff in the media release. The second victim, a University of Washington undergrad student, reported being assaulted in her apartment around the same time as the first victim, with law enforcement stating in court documents, ironically, while the first victim was reeling from her sexual assault, the defendant met the second victim at a Halloween party on Greek Row, but after matching on Tinder, he came over to her apartment and assaulted her. At the appearance, the judge set bail on both cases at $150,000. In the newsroom, Jennifer Dowling, Fox 13 News. The University of Washington has a Title IX office that works to help any member of the university community with concerns regarding sex and gender-based violence, harassment, and discrimination. It outlines what a student should do if they need to report something that has happened to them. They have a section on their website called Survivor Resources. It says its confidential advocates are available to all all students and staff at no cost. Every student has a right to make a formal complaint to the university and request an investigation. There are also supportive measures in place, including changing a class schedule, leave of absence, or mutual restrictions on communication between two parties. We have the phone number for the Office of UW's Title IX office on the bottom of your screen.